everybody's talked about it. I have some differing opinions to what a lot of the world is saying right now around Manchester United. Um, but I think these two games coming up, right? You have the Europa League tomorrow against Porto, massive game. Um, and we have at the weekend Villa, a Villa side that just took down Bayern Munich uh, in the Champions League. They'll you'll be visiting Villa Park, correct? To be the uh, the away team. So it's going to be really interesting Sunday morning to see how it's all, this all pans out. But Max, you're the United fan on this show. Um, you're watching all this unfold, bro. We saw the three nil. I don't have to recap the game. We saw the three nil, the contentious red card against Bruno that's already been overturned by the PG Bowl, which is crazy. I mean. Hopper was literally just saying before the show he's never seen that happen, um, at least not in that manner. So I don't know that quickly. So, that quickly too. It's like it's like they know they were wrong, and and you just again we ask more questions about the the officiating in this league. Um, but look, man, United's perspective. This is on the back of the worst season you guys have had, and I don't know how long could be one of the worst starts you've had to a season. I don't know how long, and so the questions are being asked about Ten Hag, about whether it's the players, the manager. Anything else that you might see, bro? How do you feel about this whole situation? Start off with if you're ten Hag in or ten Hag out. That's true. Uh, I, I I like that. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing about ten Hag. I am right now. I am still ten Hag in. His job is to help get the team to progress up the field in the final third and give them the opportunity to make a play to score a goal to help them win. You can't argue. That he's not doing that. We have top, we're the top two teams <laughs> with the expected goals this season, yet we've only scored one. I think the issue with United right now has, where the issue has been since 2012, is the profiling of players. We have guys who are not making the right decisions, guys who are not clinical. Guys that we overspent for that wasn't Tim Hawk's fault that now have a ton of pressure on them to, to come to fulfill up to that price tag and 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 do what they're supposed to do and it's just not happening. If we're gonna talk about Spurs, obviously, yes, we lost 3-0. Yes, there was a bullshit red card. But before that, we had the opportunity to score. I mean I can't say if we were going to win the game or not or draw, but I can say we had, we, although we didn't play the best up until the red card, there was opportunities to score. Xerxes had an opportunity to score, tie the game up. Garnacho had an opportunity to score. Yes, it was a difficult score, but we've seen him finish that type of, we've seen him make that type of finish before. It's not like Rashford had a chance to. Rashford had a chance. Like, it's not like, Ten, it's, it's it's we are there. It's just we're just not clinical. And it's I to me to be honest, I I don't know much more Ten Hag can do about that besides maybe changing the way that we play. I think that's the only thing that he has to do. We don't what we've been playing since he's been here is practically the same. We've had two. We played. We had either one pivot or two pivot drop deep into the ten roll and and, and get forward. We we have yet to have or in our fullbacks advancing and getting a lot of crossing in, but we have yet to try a different type of tactic where maybe we should have two strikers, maybe we have two forwards, do something different where to help the, the team to succeed. Because right now we're not we're not clinical. Yes, we've had you know Mason Mount. We've seen the difference between when Mason Mount started to you know when he's not played and and how we press, but the pressing has still kind of been the same. Yeah, it could be better, but I don't. I don't think that's like the main issue. I think the issue is that we're just not clinical. Like we we have uh, we have so many opportunities to score, and even like even the second half when we started, like we had opportunities to, to tie the game up. And mm -hmm. and you know once you once you once you attack and down ten man, it's, you're gonna tire at some point. But and that's why we lost three 0 But I I truly like the issue that I had with Ten Hag is his decision making coming certain with, with, within games with with the substitutions in the second half. Or like his timing, like some like his timing for the most part is usually wrong. And that that's my that's my issue with Ten Hag. And what I do you think mean wrong? Too early? Too late? What too, is it? too early? Too late? Um, playing favorites like Bruno has been. <laughs> Listen, we all know how much Bruno has has done for United since he joined us. 
But I'll tell you right now, he's not the main problem. He's the he's, he's the not, second he's not, one. He's not I the main you, problem. I've been saying I've been saying on the not, channel for this he's whole not the main, the past year. He's not the main problem, but he's his passing has been atrocious. His decision making has been atrocious. The last, he's the, the, that's the him though. He's a, he's but a risk, yes, he, he's a high risk, high reward player. Mm -hmm. But when we're not, when when there's no reward, there's just risk. So. I know a lot of fans are like, well, you know, since he's since he doesn't got since the red cards, you know, been taken away, should he start? I don't think he should start this. I think I think we need to. I'm I'm interested to see what he does for tomorrow against Porto because Porto away is fucking tough for anybody. I mean, anybody in Europe is very it's very hard to win in Porto against these. Shit, we found out last season, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Difficult. Yeah. It's Super fucking difficult. difficult. Barcelona won their last season one 0 but we were we got out of there. Just that game was was, was barely, crazy though. Barely, barely, barely got a masterclass game. in defense. And it took Atletico what 96, 97 minute winner. And like the one, goal we one, scored was a mistake as well. Yeah, Brian so like it, uh, was on it. So this, so this game tomorrow is is difficult. But I'm very interested to see how he how he puts this lineup out because actually I don't even know if if, if Manu is uh healthy enough to play them. I think, he's, I think I saw he he's back in training, but I don't know if he'll... Maybe I think he is, but I don't know if he's going to risk it because I think he... I think right now he has more concern about Sunday than he does about tomorrow. And he likes mm -hmm. to... And he likes to change up the lineup for, for uh, a European fixture anyway. So... Yes. He's going to uh, have to make a few changes, yeah. He's going to have to make a few changes, but... Um, yeah, the only, I mean... The, the only issue actually, uh, that I have with what you're saying is... I agree. Nothing wrong about what you said. I just don't think it's the only problem that they're not finishing. I do think Ten Hag's tactics don't work, in my opinion. Like I, I just I, think he, the way he sets up in the midfield, like you can tell when, when they're moving the ball forward and they have possession, it becomes like a 4-2-4 and the wings play really high. Um, the midfield can saying? offensively still run the show, but the minute the game transitions back, those guys are left to do a lot there's, all there's by a, themselves. There's a major gap in the midfield. Like there's teams that can lit. Well, we can. Well, we saw with Van what he did in, <laughs> against us on Sunday. But even before him, like this, just there's a major concern in the midfield once we lose possession, and that's still like. And I feel like that has happened, kind of since the beginning of the season, and it yet has it yet has to be addressed. So yes, like the defensively and and offensively, but I think the tactics just have to change. Like it's just it just has to change because it's just it's not working. Yeah. And I it's if, if if I mean at some point we cannot have suffer another defeat like or he can't suffer another defeat like that. Um because he has to complete back and by in in the else. Like he he's they're not gonna they're not gonna they're not gonna sack him. Like they they do you, think it's complete? do you really think it's complete? Like they have full faith in him? Like if, yeah, if, if he goes faith. down to Porto and Villa, they won't sack him. I think they have faith, not full yeah. faith, because they have faith for the full. But the, they invested was, too much in him to they, sack him. They invested him now. so much, and they understand like there has been no structure for years. No one has ever had structure, and yet United, no, no manager, and finally, there's some small improvement, some small structure that's being taken place at United. For you to just go sack him after after completely backing him. Is, I I mean I don't I I just don't think they're gonna do that. That just screams experience. That just screams reactionary as well. He should he get the sack? Does he deserve a sack? Maybe, but maybe, maybe but, it's way too early. If this is like December January, he would have been gone right after I, this work game. I think if we're if we're not at least close to competing for Europe by maybe January, yeah, possibly. And December also, you look possibly. at the, 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 the options right now available. Like, imagine they get Tuchel after interviewing him in the summer, and then decide to stay with Ten Hag, and how much how much of a you know rookie mistake that looks. And then also getting Ten Hag players again, Mazuari, who he's worked with, the who he's worked with, Zerzi, who he worked with. The signing of Ugarte really didn't make sense to me, especially playing Ugarte as like a lone pivot where he absolutely flopped at PSG and, doing and that role. And that's the issue because you will see times that we will try to do a, a, a double pivot, but. 95% of the time it ends up being a single pivot and you guard You know why? Not... Do you know why? I low key think Manu is more of a 10 than he is an 8 now. He is. Cause... I I I I hard hardly believe that too. I I, I think and, but the issue is that when 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 Manu when when Manu's up the pitch, so is fucking Casemiro. 
And then, that is the biggest issue. There, there is no, there's the only it, defensive midfielder you have is Casemiro, and he's just washed due to his age and where he's at his career. But he's sat on three hundred bags a week. That's the issue. I don't think and, he's completely washed. I, but I think for the Premier League, yes, I, yeah. I, I actually think he does. There's actually a fair amount that he does with his passing and his lobs over the top that I are, think that Ugarte can't do. Oh, it, it should be Ugarte and Casemiro in that double pivot for being realistic. If you want to go based on profile, and what works, it should be I them agree. too. But the issue is, is that that's not going to work now. And I think Mas- the best point Mass brought up is about player, you know, identification where United do it so late, they overspend. I think the players they brought in under Ten Hag haven't been too bad. I think the Ugarte one is the real one that screams out to me. Anthony at the time, of course, looked good. He just, you know, flopped under the pressure, circumstances, stuff like that. But it's kind of previews before that where they kind of just went and brought big players and hope for the best, like a Di Maria, Pogba, Zlatan, all this stuff. I think with Ten Hag... I think he's massively on fraud watch now. I defended him a lot last season, as you know, uh, both of you guys do remember, because I do rate him as a coach. But I'm seeing him this season as someone who's just, again, trying to get by. Last season, you could say, okay, sure, you didn't really get the signs you wanted. You just want to survive. You got the cup, whoop de doo But this summer, you were back. You got five big players that you asked for. And now he's still playing the same football, which is the question mark for me. But if I'm the board of United, I would still, you know, stick with him. Because, again, lack of... Um, availability right now in the market you have what Graham Parter, David Moyes and Tuchel it's not really like the, the only massive way we'll upgrade. Get new, the only manager that's who that we'll get are, are managers that are, are currently at a top club like Inzaghi or you're not getting in, that's the thing so you're, I, not, you're not getting these managers that, out and that's, not, and that's and that's my point yeah. like you're not we're not yeah. getting these managers in season and then why are we gonna yeah. sack our manager to get Shaq him after a, a month and a half of the season, uh, spending two hundred million is you know, wild as well. It just, just doesn't make it just doesn't make sense. So I yes, think, United is in, the, is, is in the large fucking pickle right now. But I think the to, one thing the course. I think the one thing that would change United so much, and I've been saying this over, since the end of the round table has started, is to drop this wa- washed Rashford. I'm telling you, this man is one of the most overrated players I've seen in my life. Even in his peak good seasons, I never rated him. This man is just pace galore and just. Ends up scoring the again his pace and these knuckleball shots that he shoots from distance that end up going in. That's his only reputation. You drop him, you have Ahmad and Gardacho on the wing. Even put Bruno in the ten. I don't care. You will see a drastic improvement. Poor guy has number ten set on four hundred k a week. That's why he starts week in week out. I'm telling you, this man is so so I, so overrated. I did think it was weird, really weird that Ahmad did not start against Spurs. Um, and look how I, how I think how he's the one must start attacker in my opinion. And look how well United did in preseason. Why? Because they had Ahmad and Garnacho on the wings. Because when you put your best left winger on the right wing, then you stick a left for, uh, left uh, wing who doesn't provide good left wing uh, abilities. It's just it's just not going to work. It's more imbalanced than your midfield. At least have proper width, proper depth. That way, at least your midfield can combat that. But it's just crazy. Yeah, I, I, I'm putting I'm pulling this up because I, I want to go back just really quickly to the whole like, um, you know his players that he's brought in mm-hmm. um the the profile misidentification again i think and the only would, one really is Agarty to play him as in a double yeah team. in my I opinion think I think it's just it's, it's just him I, I, and, but with that said like these other players that he's brought in many of them being some you know him some of his former players under some of the best years he's had as a manager um i i feel like do we think Indios had the driver's seat when it came to these transfers this past summer or was this all ten hug no, absolutely. I think the reason why they were brought here was for reasons like this. They take the pressure off the manager of going and signing whoever he really wants rather than what's needed for the club. So I think I still think Delict was a great signing, regardless of who the manager is. I think De- at, at that price, it's it's a great price for for for, for that type of profile player. I, I I think Masri. I mean, I I didn't think he was going to. The turn only sinker here is the two in the bottom left in Ugarte based on profile, and the player is good and yeah. Mason Mount spending six million on Mason Mount. Well, yeah, I, I I literally that's the first thing I, I said when we signed. I'm like, we mm. spent overspent for Mason Mount when we know it's. Well, exactly you, 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 I, be, I think we're being honest. You probably overspent for like ninety percent of the players. Everybody, yeah, everybody, yeah. Everybody. But, yes. In but, terms of profile, how it would improve yeah. United, what Ten Hag needed, I think and all of them are fine except for Mount Mason Mount. Yeah. Uh, and Mason Mount's come. It's turn, turning out to be the possibly one of the worst signings. I think like, I, I, I'm in the group history. chat. I think he's the worst signing right now in Premier League history, based on profile, price, expectations. But what, what he's for not being giving him the number seven available. as well. Yeah, not when, he, when he's available. He plays. He plays like shite. 
You could have well, said now at least now with Bruno getting a red card, okay. But the issues that the issues that with, with, with him though, no. it's playing is just he'll play maybe two games and then be hurt for the next two weeks, three weeks, come back, be hurt again for a month. Like he, there's no consistency with him. So Fair. that's that's one, that's one of the issues with Mount. Like there's just no consistency. Like it's hard it's hard for a player to find some type of form when you're just that's playing sporadically and you're not also playing a full game. You may be playing 20 minutes. You may be playing 50 minutes, but you, there's just no, there's no consistency and it's but, hard for any player to, to find consistency. I, I like agree. But, but with Mount too, it's also that like, you know, of course the injuries, the inconsistencies, but like we also on a positive side, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I thought Mount was like absolutely essential to be in the lineup to start the season because of I what he does defensively. I, I, I thought so too. Like he was a, He's a good player. workhorse. We found like another player. side of his game that nobody really ever talks about. Yeah. And it, and it's like there's value to that. And and that's that's something that you can deploy and actually use and it be serviceable in a match. Like I don't think Mason Mount like it's to be determined if he's gonna be the worst signing of all time, but I, I still well, think I, that there I, is I value right to bring him We're not right we're not saying we're not saying I'm well, I'm not saying like he is the worst signing. I said yeah, it could possibly no, look to no, be one of the worst signings at that like at that price. I one last question. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One question, yeah. real quick. Um, we're just, just to, so I know how you feel about this manager, because in comparison to the others, because that to me will, will I think should dictate into Ineos' decision a little bit. Because keep in mind, I know you guys think that it would be very reactionary for Ineos to, to fire him, but it, if they much. lose, if they lose to Villa, it's seven points in seven matches, and I don't think any Manchester United fan is going to just let that one roll over the shoulder, be okay with that. I think it's going to be up. The Ten Hag the ten hack out crowd will be louder than ever, and that pressure could cause anybody to be like, you know what, let's just find somebody. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll use Rude as the interim. The fans love him. It'll get the monkey off our back for a little bit, and we'll go out there and have a proper search for a manager. Like, I don't awesome. think that's crazy. I don't think Rude likes Ten Hag all that much, if I'm being honest. And I, I feel like it's 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 a plausible scenario. That's all that I'm saying. But the why question I have: Why don't you think Rude uh, doesn't like Ten Hag? Wasn't Ten Hag the one that brought him in? No, I heard it was Ineos, and I heard it was um, I. I can't remember what channel I well, was watching I, when they were talking about it. But I, I believe it wasn't Ten Hag. I, it was Ineos because I think their backup plan was that they were ever to get rid of Ten Hag. It would to it would make yeah, it give to Rude as interim. Yeah, I, I heard. Yeah, he was like, which, why, why, why would I step away from a head which, coach? Which is position? what I, which is I kind of don't like because now he's not going to be successful. Really the question I, I don't think he's if if I mean I hope he would be successful, but the way things are, if that was the case, now you're putting him into such a bad. You're putting a a, a former legend to an, another former legend to another bad situation for a club. But that's gonna be the case for any manager that and, comes in. It's a it's a shit yeah, situation, but like it's a situation, but it's it's a situation for a another former legend of the club. That's true. That's just that's that's just what it I. Sucks. That's just it how sucks I for the fans. I agree. It, it does. It does. It does. Because now ideal. you have now you have more fans against another former legend of the club like that and then just, when it doesn't work out they're gonna feel like the fans are just kicking out another legend the, it starts it just, all over it again like uh, yeah it does it does suck i i agree um but the question i had you know uh just kind of moving on from for, just before we move on from this thing is since fergie left all these managers have brought something interesting to the table at least on paper right in one way or another and it hasn't panned out for a number of reasons just so we know where you think Ten Hag is. How would where, where does he fit in? There's been six or seven managers since Fergie left. Where does he fall in that rank? Is he third, fourth? Is he, is he the best manager you guys have had since since Fergie? I think he's the second best at the Marino. I would say Marino's probably number one too. Actually, you, so you rate him ahead of Oli? Yeah, I he's he's ten, to be honest, Ten Hag has technically been the, the most successful manager we, we've had since Fergie, technically speaking. Yeah. Um, and, it's, 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 and, be, and and before and before the season, win percentage he technically was the highest. Technically, let me let me just piggyback off of there super super quick. What's the best like moment you've seen at United since Ferguson? Like, uh, who played the best football? Because I think that little you know second place run for like two months under Oli was the Oli best was that good. That's, that's what I was gonna say too. Right before they signed Varane and Sancho, I think. Yeah, yeah, I was. That was. I mean, that that time was was glorious. I mean, not even even COVID. <laughs> COVID only as well was different. It, was different. Yeah, level. true, true. But yeah. COVID, COVID. I mean, COVID was completely different because there was no fans. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Are yeah. very and hard. The, and Bruno was in the fucking run of his life. Bruno, too, and Bruno, that's, Bruno came. I also think that's Bruno the best. Bruno came should have won the Ballon d'Or. For so. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, yeah, for seriously, that he had a crazy run. So like, yeah, I mean, he was unstoppable. Like, there's nothing you can do with that man. Um, immediately, immediately upon signing. But anyway, yeah. 
Also, I mean, with, with United, care. they're lucky that this is early on the season. I mean, I saw Barcelona be ninth in October with Como, and then Xavi came in and we finished third. Uh, you know, and the, if, and the, everything and can and be turned around. Yeah. And I'm saying, and all I'm saying is like, I think once if, if if we can ever figure out the clinical aspect to the team, yes, the setup, the fence, they it needs some work, but once the team can can start scoring goals, I, I mean, I'm hoping that just starts to trend of us being a little bit more being more clinical, but I it's just it's just it's gonna come down to how we play against I it comes gonna come down to how we play against Porto tomorrow. I mean it's gonna be difficult no matter what, but we gotta we just have to be clinical. I mean we just have to be clinical. I mean, we're that's that's I don't know. I don't I know. Agree. It's just we have we 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 we, we have just, a ex, uh expect expected goal rate of literally like nine point eight ten. Just drop Rashford and you'll see the difference, man. I'm telling you. I mean, I would I would love to see him play two strikers. I would love to see him somehow play two strikers. I don't know. Do something four, four, different. Four four two peak. Uh... Four 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 two peak. <laughs> peak Jose uh, Bo. I, don't <laughs> I don't know, man. Do hey, bro, if it gets different. results, if it gets results, nobody bro, cares. I'm t- that just nobody I promise cares. you, watch if he, I pray that he drops Rashford for Porto and watch them like win two 0 Remember when the Jose dropped in the group chat? The three games coming up: Tottenham, Porto, Villa. What did I say, Jose? How many points yeah. they get at nine? I said yeah, one probably. out of nine. So yeah. I already saw this coming. This is not a surprise to me because they're too inexperienced. There's too many holes in the team that Ten Hag, I think, knows the answer to, but either just have the balls or can't do it. Like you can't drop your captain week in, week out. You can't drop your number 10 highest paid player week in, week out. You know, the one who's on the face outside of Old Trafford. You know, it's, it's like, 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 like if you couldn't drop them because they were performing, right? Like that, I understand, right? It's like, you know, that you have your go to players and it's annoying when you don't rotate them. But like, yeah, yeah, I agree with Hoffman. You just gotta be comfortable dropping him because I just I don't I I don't think it's worth. Just say it's a rest and just just let them. I tell you, even if you have a front four of Zerxi up front, Mason Mount behind, Ahmed Ganacho. Rashford one does have some game. insane Champions League moments, though. I, I will say that. I know it's Europa League, but I'm just saying. Like I feel like maybe Ten Hag puts a lot of stock into that. Just like I told you, Europe, Rashford he... is just pace in this knuckleball from like 40 yards out. That's all he is. I'm telling when he you. Hit, when he when he hits it, though, yeah. It's I not, mean, yeah, it's not worth the, the 400k the one, a week he's making. Yeah, the saying, one goal like, of the season, you'll, 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 you'll <laughs> drool and you know the fire usually, emojis will come out. It's but... usually a banger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Like the one he had against Barnsley before this little negative. Well, against City last season was was freaking nuts. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, look, I, I don't know what happens. Uh, I'd love to know everybody's uh, opinions down below, United fans. I mean, look, Max is 10 hag in. I see the logic. Um, I don't think there's a right, si- like, solution here. I really don't. It's going to be really hard isn't. for him or for the next manager who comes in. If it's rude, if it's somebody else, they got a whole can of worms to open up and try and figure out, like, how to make good of it. So, well, yeah, man, I, I don't know. I'm we'll 10 hag in, but if he, gets, if he gets sacked, like, I'm not going to, like, cry about it, you know? Like, I don't it's think anybody just, will. It's just like I think I think United fans just want stability. They just want like some kind of sense of just like continuity. Yeah, it's just. I, I get it, bro. I get it. Yeah. Trust me, man. I came out of a banter era, still alive. Um, uh, it's you know not saying United's there yet, but hey, listen, they might be. They might be, they might be on right the now, path. But, they might but, be on but, the path. I heard someone in a, in a live stream today said they uh, that the crazy take Bayern Munich was uh, they didn't want as a Bayern fan they didn't want to become the next Manchester United. And I thought that that was kind of a wild way to look at like this trophy list season last season, kind of how they're starting now. The loss to Villa, um, Bayern fans are already like freaking out. out. Yeah, yeah, Bayern fans are already freaking out. Um, I, I don't know. United's gonna have a massive telescope on them, but at the same time, or microscope on them. Sorry, but at the same time, I I I think there is a path out here. They just gotta gotta figure it out. Gotta figure it out. Whether it's Ten Hag or somebody else.